Right. Really, really lucky this morning, really privileged actually, because I know he's busy, but um, he's an All Black. He is currently an Auckland Blues player as well. Very busy, but he is also an ambassador for the World Vision 40 Hour Famine, and he joins us now. Good morning, Intalo, for Caleb Clark. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning team. What's How are up? you doing? Yeah, we're good, man. We're good. First of all, are you good? How for people who don't know, Caleb's been out of action for a little bit because of the hammy hamstring. How are you doing, bro? Yeah. Getting there, getting there. Not the most um ideal situation for um my position, but definitely getting there. It's um been a long process, but you know, taking it one day at a time. So hopefully you see me back in action um before the blue season's finished. So yeah. It's exciting, it's exciting. Caleb, um, your legs are about the same size as my actual body. <laughs> are you Are you glad that skinny jeans are no longer popular? Yeah, I don't even think, like, I think normal jeans are skinny jeans for my legs, eh? So, <laughs> bit, of a, bit of an ask when I have to ask one of my mates, oh, can I borrow a pair of jeans? <laughs> Wait a minute, you still have to borrow jeans? Oh, sometimes, like, um, I'm really close to a Roger's little brother Johnny. Yeah, and it's funny because like he, so us two pretty much have the same size legs. I'm like, bro, bro, can I borrow a pair of jeans? I'm staying in Onehunga now, so I'm not at my family home back out west, and so a lot of my clothes are still in uh, West Auckland. So sometimes I'm going down to Johnny's house, like, hey man, can I borrow those pants? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's humbling. That's good to know that even you know professional athletes, All Blacks, still just borrowing clothes from their friends. That's good. Yeah, I, I yeah, wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't be borrowing Johnny's clothes though. You got the same legs, but not the same stomach, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got the same heart, you know. It's the same heart of giving. <laughs> Can I ask, Caleb? Uh, um, the All Black season's coming up, and I know it's it's been a little while because you you went away with sevens and stuff like that, yeah. and a return to potentially the All Blacks. They haven't. I don't, I'm pretty sure they haven't named the first squad or anything yet. When that happens. Do you get a heads up as to whether you've made the squad or do you literally just have to tune in and find out like like the rest of the country? Um, a lot of us just have to tune in, eh? Like, <laughs> um, the year I got picked was a bit different because we had that North-South game, but most most seasons, yeah, if you're not sort of like already been in the squad or incumbent player, you just find out on the day. Wow. So, yeah, it's a bit of a, um, it's a, bit of a cool surprise. So, <laughs> well, 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 we'll touch back on the rugby before we wrap up, Caleb. But uh, you're here to talk about the World Vision 40 Hour Famine, which is yeah. this country's largest <laughs> fundraising event. It takes place from July 1 through to July 3, and you're an ambassador of the event. So, just tell us yeah. a little bit about um, your involvement your involvement this year. Yeah, so I was um, I was really lucky and um, really grateful that. Um, the World Vision 40 Hour Famine team asked me to come back as an ambassador. I, I joined the team last year and um, had so much fun with it. Um, this year it's a bit different. The whole theme is around water. And so, yeah, it's just been um, such a cool journey, such um, a cool thing to be a part of, being able to give back and um, to really just take a step back and realise how lucky we are here in New Zealand. Um, we got to see other countries in the world that are struggling with you know, like simple necessities like water. It's just, um, you know, it's really heartbreaking to see. And so being a part of something, you know, that's bigger than myself, that's um, getting to do something for someone else is just, you know, it's an awesome feeling to do. And so really encouraging everyone to, to jump in. And yeah, it's just something just to give back and um, really give something, give yourself to something more. So, yeah. We uh, here at Life of Them are going to be doing 40 acts of uh, kindness over 40 hours. Do you yeah. do you know what you're going to be doing? Because uh, I imagine you can't do the actual famine, right? Being a professional athlete, you need to eat food. Yeah. Um, don't know if the coaches are be keen on you stopping eating for 40 hours. <laughs> Have you got a challenge that you're going to do? I know you'll be busy, you know, visiting people mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff at the same time. A lot of my stuff, I was actually thinking of getting like a bucket of water and surviving off that for the three days. So oh. it was a bit of a bit of a stretch because I was like oh I might be training over those days but you know if I really want to like dive into into what it feels like you know to be in one of those countries where you know some some countries people have to walk like miles just to get like a not even a fresh bucket of water it's still like half dirty so really that's what I'm I'm wanting to do but 
I'll sort of have to talk to the nutritionist and see if it's a good idea. Right? <laughs> you know, we, we were talking about the reality that we have, and you touched on it, is so far removed from the reality of even some mm. of the people over in the Pacific Islands who don't have access to yeah. clean water. So, you know, when you when we do raise a lot of money for this, and hopefully we do, and yeah. uh, and hopefully you can raise a lot of money on the back of what you're doing, what, what sort of difference do you reckon that's going to make for the people who don't have clean water? I think it makes a huge difference. Like, um, I know with a lot of the money that is raised, it's going to help, you know, build wells to provide clean water for, for kids and for families that, um, like I said before, have to walk miles away or kilometers away just to get um, half a decent bucket of water. Um, it's also, I've already seen um, something that like buzzed me out because they showed us, it's like a um, water purification kit. So it's like $6 and you can just get water and you pour this sort of powder in it and it sort of cleans the water and even just small things like that, that um, it just not buzzes me out, but it's just crazy that, you know, we've come such a long way and just something so small can help, you know, a family just provide them with water. And it's like, it's sort of heartbreaking to even just say like, it's just water, like here, like like I said before, in New Zealand, we, we can drink out of a tap, we can go to a park and, you know, drink out of the fountain. So, yeah, I think the money that's raised is really going to help so many different families and um, places that struggle in the world just to provide them with clean water. And, yeah, that's what something I'm really excited about. Amazing that you can do that for $6, eh? You know, yeah. Like yeah. It, it seems like such a small amount to, to give or to if you're sponsoring someone who's doing a famine of some sort or um, doing the challenge, you know, when, you, when you're like, oh, I can only give 10 bucks or some small amount, it can go right. so far, right? Because it's like just the littlest thing helps in such a big way. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I know you're grounded in faith as well, Caleb, so this must have been an easy, easy decision for you to sort of, um, sort of make to... to uh, to get alongside with um, the 40-hour yeah. family? Yeah, definitely. And I always um, sort of reflect and I sort of thought back to when I first started my rugby career and um, what I really wanted to do was just to, um, you know, leave a sort of a legacy where I've always wanted to um, use this platform and of rugby and to really connect and, you know, shine the Lord's light. And so when the uh, 40-hour family, oh, the World Vision 40-hour famine team, you know, um, sort of messaged me last year. I just knew this was something that um, I wanted to be a part of. It's something that helped me, um, you know, reach and connect with so many other people, not with not just within New Zealand. You know, we got to connect with people all around the world. And so, um, you know, faith plays a big part in that. And, you know, that's really um, why I'm a part of this and sort of the deeper, the deeper meaning to, you know, when people ask, why did you join? That's sort of the real reason is because, um, like you said, um, you know, with my family, we're a real faith-based family. And so the decision to, to jump on board with the World Vision 40-hour famine was um, real easy. And it's just, yeah, I'm really grateful to, to be a part of all of it. you got a beautiful spirit and a beautiful heart, Caleb. Uh, and, and all the best for your all-back selection. I think you're, you're pinned in there somewhere. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see you for the finals, bro. Hopefully. We'll get to see you yeah. in the finals. Thanks so much for your time. Take up Caleb on his challenge to do the World Vision 40-hour famine. You can head over to worldvision.org.nz and register now. Take care, Caleb. Thank you. Thanks, guys. It's so good to see everyone again. Yeah. Sorry, so we on see to, you. I can see people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you just um, reply to my message next time. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Caleb. Right. We'll see you later. Yeah.